A new day and new developments. Hello everyone from the new sections of the Pioneer team's daily map report. As the Pioneer, we continue to transmit the war to you. In a moment, we will tell you about the latest developments in the Russia-Ukraine war. According to the latest reports, the Ukrainian army is continuing its counteroffensive operations in at least three sectors of the front line. As you can imagine, some areas stand out. The front line was quite calm today compared to the previous days. We see that at many points, the troops of both armies remain motionless. The artillery units, as you can imagine, never stopped. Both Ukrainian artillery units and Russian artillery units were active on the front line. So what is the latest situation on the front line? Let's examine the latest developments together. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so as not to miss the map reports and daily reports prepared by the Pioneer team. As you can also support me and my team by using the super thanks button at the bottom of the video. If you're ready, let's start. The Pioneer Reports. Today, I would like to start our map report by conveying to you the latest situation on the Zaporizhia front line. As you can know, we often mention the Zaporizhia front line in every report because the Zaporizhian front line is very important. Let's remember once again the importance of the Zaporizhia front line. As you can see on the map, the Zaporizhia front line stretches from the Wuhelder to Wazilivka. The reason behind the goal of the Ukrainian army to achieve gains here is to reach the Sea of Azov. As you can see here, the Ukrainian army can reach the Azov Sea coast through the Zaporizhia front line, which is the closest. Regions such as Berdyansk and Mariupol located on the coast of the Sea of Azov are of a great importance in terms of the course of the war. These two regions are used to provide the equipment and supplies needed by the Russian army. So, in a sense, Russian soldiers on the front line will not survive without support from Berdyansk and Mariupol. Therefore, the Ukrainian army is trying to advance to these two cities and ensure the Russian soldiers on the front line remain both without equipment and without supplies. It is also possible to say here that the armed forces of Ukraine are trying to open a channel. When we analyze the war map from the broad perspective, we see that this region is located between the occupied northeastern Ukraine and the Crimean Peninsula. Russian troops here provide support to each other from time to time. The Ukrainian army's access to the Sea of Azov eliminates the land connection between the Crimean Peninsula and the Russian occupation forces located in the northeastern Ukraine. In addition, the Ukrainian army's positions on the coast of the Sea of Azov poses a threat to the crash bridge connecting to the Crimean Peninsula to the Russian mainland. Therefore, it is this way. It is aimed to isolate the Russian troops on the Crimean Peninsula. I can say that it is one of the most important reasons why the Ukrainian army attaches such an importance to the Zaporizhia front line. As a result, Ukrainian officials mention in every statement that the goal of the Ukrainian army to liberate the Crimean Peninsula. There is both of a great desire and a great effort for the liberation of the peninsula, which has been under the Russian occupation since 2014. In other words, we can also say that the Ukrainian army's attacks on the Zaporizhia front line are aimed to softening the strength. The objectives of the operations have some major variations for each region. For the Crimean Peninsula, there is an aim to isolate it, while for the cities on the Sea of Azov, such as Berdyansk and Mariupol, there is an aim to control the Kretsch Bridge by obtaining a base on the Sea of Azov. On the other hand, although the Ukrainian army has the goal of reaching the Sea of Azov, it also has the goal of reaching cities such as Melitopol and Tokmak, which are in the middle. In fact, it would not be wrong for us to call these goals to primary goals. These regions, just like Mariupol and Berdyansk, are of a great importance for the Russian soldiers on the front line. Melitopol and Tokmak are the collection point for equipment and ammunition brought by the Russian army through the Sea of Azov. These equipment and ammunition are collected first in Melitopol and Tokmak. Then, thanks to the railway lines and other supply routes located in these two cities, they are shipped to the Russian troops located both south and north of the front line. In fact, we can compare these two cities to one heart. The supply routes expanding from the two cities is every part of the front line are veins. Of course, these hearts and veins belong to the Russian army at the moment. The Ukrainian armed forces also want to destroy the Russian army on the front line, taking over both the heart and veins. When we look at the latest situation of the Ukrainian army on the Zaporizhia front line, we see that the efforts of to advance 
in the Robotny region are continuing. Here, the Ukrainian army is trying to surround the Robotny region. The latest reports indicates that the Ukrainian army is about to put Russian troops under the siege around Novoprokopivka. There is an obstacle in front of the Ukrainian army here. The obstacle is the long-range Russian cannons located in Novoprokopivka. Long-range Russian cannons appear to have slowed the Ukrainian army's advance so far. But there is a progress, albeit slowly. There are new gains of the Ukrainian army in the forested areas located northwest of Novoprokopivka. In addition to the Russian artillery units, Ukrainian artillery units are also continuing their operations in the region. According to the latest reports, Ukrainian artillery units hit Russian positions in Zhurabyanki, Nesteryanki, Kopani, Ichenkov, Verbov, and Dovoprokopovka. Today, we will not touch on the military section of the Zaprizhia frontline. As we mentioned recently, there is a silence in the region. The silence has not yet been broken. Therefore, there is no up-to-date information coming from our sources in the region. We were talking about the advances of the Ukrainian army on the Donetsk front line in the direction of Ubytny. The Russian army made an attempt to stop this advance. However, the Ukrainian forces who set up defensive fortifications in the area where they advance in the region managed to repel this attempt of the Russian army. On the Bakhmut front line, we see that the Ukrainian army is advancing up to the railway line located east of Andreevka. In addition, the railway line around Klishchivka had also come under the control of the Ukrainian army. According to the latest reports, Russian troops in the region have largely abandoned their positions and retreated. This region will show us interesting developments related to the city center of Bakhmut in the coming days. The Ukrainian army has reached one of its targets on the flanks. Now there is the Bakhmut North Wing next. And what do you think? Do you think the Ukrainian army will be able to reach its target on the Zaprizhia front line? Will we see the Ukrainian domination on the shores of the Sea of Azov? Do you think that the Crimean Peninsula will come under the control of the Ukrainian army? Do you think that the new mobility will start in the north of Bakhmut city center? Mention it in the comments. I'm reading and caring about all your comments.